and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're having a bit of a Valentine's Day extravaganza. But first, if you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Anna Betka, and I'm a pianist, vocal coach, and writer. Today, we will be celebrating all things love. I have lined up for you some dessert. We're going to be making some chocolate mousse together. Mm. What else? Flowers. We have some hearts. Some poetry. Music. I hope you can stay with us to the end. But first, Okay, so I've taken three eggs out of the fridge. Now they're still cold, which means it is perfect to separate them now before they reach room temperature. Don't ask me why, but it's easier. We have the egg whites, and then in this cute little pink bowl, we have these beautifully orange, yellow egg yolks. All right, so that's ready to go. So now we have to Prep one cup of heavy whipping cream. There should be enough for one cup in this, but you never know. Oh, look at that, just enough for one cup. I have another one in case, just to spare, but I wanted to finish this one up first. Okay, that's one cup, ready to go. Heavy whipping cream. Before we chop up the chocolate, I'm going to just cube some butter. All right, the chocolate is chopped, the eggs are separated, the butter is cubed, the espresso is brewed. Ah! It rhymed. You see, I'm already making poetry here. All right, and next step, we have to whip up this cream to get our actual mousse started. I don't know about you, but I find chocolate mousse to be the most romantic dessert you could make. It's easy to make, and there are very few ingredients, and it is silky, it is sumptuous, luxurious, decadent. Now there's a word I associate with Valentine's Day. Okay, that's all there is to that. I told you it was easy. So what I have here is one giant bowl of chocolate mousse. If you wanted, I suppose you could refrigerate all of this and then eat it straight from the bowl. <laughs> Can you imagine? Or uh, you could scoop it out into individual sized serving uh, dishes. I'm going to scoop out because it's Valentine's Day, so I have two ramekins so you can share your chocolate mousse with your special someone. I'm going to scoop out enough chocolate mousse to fill up these two and I'm going to refrigerate two of these and the rest I will just keep in the bowl and I might scoop it out for a second helping. Okay, our decadent chocolate mousse is all wrapped up and ready to go chill some in the fridge. You can chill it from anywhere between 8 hours to 24 hours, but for myself personally, it's going to be more like 6, because in all honesty, who can wait that long to eat something so delicious? In the meantime, we're going to find out some more about possibly the sexiest composer of all time, the OG superstar celebrity virtuoso of the 19th century, Franz Liszt. What better composer to talk about on the day of love, specifically romantic love? Liszt was a real charmer, a ladies man, if you will, and he knew a lot about L-O-V-E. All right, while that's chilling in the fridge, go make yourself a cup of coffee or tea and let's talk a little poetry. Today's poem is Widmung, which from the German in translation means dedication. Although it was written by a German poet, Friedrich Rückert, today it is arguably more associated with the 19th century composer, Robert Schumann. 
Schumann set the poem to music in his song cycle, Merton, which he dedicated to his newlywed wife, Clara, on the occasion of their wedding. Now, this was a big deal for them getting married because when he went to her father to ask for her hand in marriage, he said, nuh -uh. <laughs> And uh, Clara and Robert took him to court and sued him. So getting married was a big deal for them. Vidmung is the first song in this collection, and the title of the entire set, Merton, also holds special significance. Merton refers to the myrtle flowers often associated with bridal bouquets. Now, without further ado, here is my English spin of Vidmung. You, my soul, you, my heart, you, my bliss. Oh, you, my pain. You, my world in which I live, my heaven, you in which I float. Oh, you, my grave, into which I forever gave my sorrow. You are rest. You are peace. You are granted to me from heaven. That you love me makes me worthy myself. Your gaze has transformed me in front of myself. You raise me lovingly above myself, my better spirit my better me. So beautiful, and just wait till you hear the music. So Schumann wrote the song cycle in 1840, and one way musicians were able to make covers of songs back in the 19th century was by writing transcriptions. Franz Liszt, you might remember him from earlier, was a prolific composer of transcriptions for solo piano, and his take on Vidmung is probably one of the most popular. Take a listen. That was just the first stanza of the poem to give you a little appetizer or a little tasting, a little amuse-bouche of what's to come. And if you stay to the very end, you can listen to a complete performance of this incredible, uh, lush, sonorous arrangement. Liszt wrote this transcription in 1848 and published it under a different name, Liebeslied, which literally translates to love song. At this point, Liszt was living with the second great love of his life, the Princess Caroline von Sein Wittgenstein. He had just met her the year before, and although she had been separated from her husband for several years, they lived openly as a couple. At that time, this was completely scandalous and had societal repercussions not only for Caroline, but more importantly, for her daughter, whose marriage eligibility could have potentially been damaged by these circumstances. To avoid this, and to avoid potential court function restrictions, Caroline and Liszt traveled to Rome to try and get a divorce sanctioned by the Pope. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Liszt's first significant affair was with French aristocrat Marie Dagou, who left her husband and her family to elope with Liszt to Switzerland. So they eloped in March, and then in December of that same year, they had a kid together. <sighs> All right, let me read you some lines from the letters Liszt sent to Marie, and 
you know, just, just think of it as a text, MBD. On his return to Paris, he wrote, How ardent, how glowing on my lips is your last kiss. And a short time later, Write to me often. You write so divinely, so straight from the heart. Your every word burns with an inner flame. There is only one name now that I repeat every hour. Obviously, this was from early on in their relationship. Once, uh, Marie addressed one of her letters to List as, To a genius. I mean, yeah, she was completely head over heels, madly, passionately in love with Franz Liszt. There were, of course, countless other affairs over the years, uh, but this one really got me. Liszt's sojourn in Berlin was marked by close friendships with two women of distinction. One of them was Charlotte von Hagen, the finest actress in Germany and one of the great beauties of her time. A typical Bavarian with blonde hair and blue eyes, blah, 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 blah. She spoke excellent French and... List found in her a warm and delightful companion. Mm. Vulnerable to List's chivalrous attentions, Charlotte scribbled a love poem on the corner of her fan for him. List carried it off and set the words to music. Now, here's... This is what, what really got me. Seven years after their brief encounter... Charlotte, who was now married, wrote to List, You have spoiled all other people for me. Nobody can stand the comparison. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And with that, my friends, it is time to get some chocolate mousse out of the fridge. All right, voila. Here it is. Here is the... Magnum Opus Chocolate Mousse. Let's have a taste. Oh, this is so good, it shouldn't be allowed. Why is this so good? It is velvety, it is moussey, is that a word? I don't know. It just tastes like chocolate pillow. All right, while I devour this, I think it's time for another musical interlude. This time, from a different century, different genre. But don't worry, it's still on the topic of love. Here's a cover of one of my favorite show tunes, My Funny Valentine. Bon appétit. <laughs> Are 
I love that song. It's funny I picked this song since we're already talking about Liszt, and apparently, according to one of his contemporaries, Liszt could hardly be called handsome. Yet, there was in it a subtle something that was most attractive, and his whole manner had a fascination which it is impossible to describe. Today, we call this charisma. You might be surprised to hear that Liszt had always been fascinated with religion, and after a lifetime of scandal, Liszt took four minor orders with the Roman Catholic Church in 1865. I like to think that might be part of the reason why he chose to transcribe particularly Widmung for the piano. If you listen closely towards the end, you will hear Schumann quoting Schubert's Ave Maria to highlight that almost pious like just can't live without devotion we aspire to so much in romantic love. Before we listen to the full performance of Widmung, I wanted to wish each one of you a beautiful Valentine's Day. Thanks for watching this video, and if you would like to stay up to date with more content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on. See you next time, and don't forget, each day is Valentine's Day. Here's the full performance of Vidmung. Hope you enjoy! <laughs> <laughs>